Hi everyone, today I want to talk about defaulting. Um, so this is inspired by lots of, of you know, sort of uh, hard thinking, steam coming out of my ears and such, um, uh, with, with Sam Derbyshire and, and Simon Peyton Jones on, on, well, on the design of defaulting in GHC. So I'll link to, the, to, a, to a GHC ticket in the, in the description. Um, but I just wanted to unpack some of the issues that we're thinking about and how things are quite strange today and maybe some ideas of how they be, might become less strange tomorrow. So it all comes down to inferring the type of something simple, this. So we would think, oh, gee, well, we know what the type of, of, of that is. And in fact, HLS kindly provides us the type here that this is going to work. This is going to be some function f that works for any type p, just chooses p. I don't know exactly why it's p, but let's just go with that. Um, so that all that sounds pretty good so far, except that it turns out that this function can't be used at any type p. It can only be used at those types p that are represented by a pointer. So normally in Haskell, every type we normally think about is represented by a pointer to some memory in the heap. But Haskell supports types that aren't pointers. So we can see that down here. So I can write g. Um, and let's just skip the argument of g for a second. I can call f at three hash. Um, OK, so what's going on here? So first, if we try to say this, we're going to get a parse error. What's that hash there? Well, that is the magic hash, like so. Um, and then we have another error, which we'll examine in a moment. Uh, but now we don't have a parse error, at least. So what is the magic hash? So first off, let's get rid of the call to f, and I'll show you that this actually compiles. And it compiles to something that has a real type here. So let me import ghc.x so we don't have to see the whole module qualification there. Um, so what three hash here is, is three hash is an unboxed int. This is a real machine int. So on my machine, it's going to be represented by 64 bits, uh, the last two of which are ones and the rest are zeros. No pointers, no shenanigans. This is what is called an int in C. Um, and, and we might want to write a program that works over these machine ints because they can be faster. Now, GHC is quite good at optimizing and often can optimize away a normal Haskell ints into these int hashes. Uh, um, uh, but if maybe GHC is running into trouble with that, we might want to do this manually. Um, ho hopefully not too often. So the, the hash is just um, sort of a little marker that says, I don't want the normal overloaded three. I want this this int three. So maybe is, is HLS clever enough? Yes. If I point to this, it says that it really has type int hash. Um, and that's that's the type. I have to import that from ghc.x here um, uh, to get that int hash type. Uh, I should also point out that this hash at the end of int hash is just sort of a, a, a convention that we put hashes at the ends of, of these sort of low level unboxed things that aren't represented by pointers. It has no semantic significance. But to allow us to do that, we have to turn on this language extension magic hash, which allows it both in identifiers and in, in number literals and maybe a, a few more places like probably character literals, things like that. Um, so one other strange thing I did here is I have an underscore. Why do I have that? Um, well, GHC does not allow, um, well, let's just look at the error and we'll see. Top level bindings for unlifted types aren't allowed. And the reason for that is, is that this is an unlifted type. So what? It, so I, I probably use the word unboxed. Um, unboxed means it's not represented by a pointer. There's no memory, no box allocated on the heap for it. Unlifted is a related concept and it means that it's not lazy. Um, uh, lifted is kind of the fancy uh, word for something that's lazy, that admits bottom, that we, can, that, that we can just sort of store something that hasn't been evaluated that might never actually evaluate. Well, if we're just a machine int, we have no way of representing that. Um, for a normal boxed int, then we can cleverly, in, instead of having a pointer to a, a number, we can have a pointer to some chunk of code that we have to evaluate uh, in order to get the number. But we don't have any room to store that with one of these unboxed ints. Um, and, and so because of that, this is a strict binding, but GHC doesn't know when to evaluate it. Right? Instead of three hash, maybe this is some very long function of three hash. And now it becomes clearer that just sort of having a top level binding that looks like this doesn't really make sense. And so GHC has this restriction. So instead, we have to have it 
We, we, we say that G just takes this, this argument. I don't care what the argument is, but it allows me to say that it equals three hash uh, without getting this complaint. So that um, HLS sort of doesn't, or VS code, I actually don't know who's responsible for that bit, but uh, the error doesn't go away on its own. Um, but, but we can see here the, the module is green, so all is well. Okay, so let's go back to calling F on three hash. And so now we get an error. Let's look at the error. Couldn't match a lifted type with an unlifted type. Um, so already, some of the terminology that I've introduced is paying off. So here, P1, um, that's the type that F is expecting. That comes from this P. Um, doesn't match int hash, the actual type of three hash. Um, and it's saying that the first thing it checks is, is that are they, are they even the same sort of general shape? And this P1, it can be any type, but it has to be lifted. And the reason for that is that when I write this F function, this compiles down to a real function that's going to run on my machine. So a function, when we call it, it expects arguments in a certain way, and then it does some computation, and then it places the result in a particular spot that the caller will find it. Well, in this case, F is expecting to get an argument that is a pointer to some memory, um, and then maybe does some manipulations. In this case, the manipulation is very simple. It just copies that memory address uh, uh, to the result location, um, which on some platforms might not even be a copy at all. Um, but and then it's and then and then it's done. But critically, it is expecting a um, a pointer. And here I've passed. I've given it something other than a pointer. I've given it a machine int. So on many platforms, a machine int and a pointer might be represented by the same number of bits. So maybe if we just sort of ignored this problem and ran it anyway, it would probably be okay. But it would probably not be as okay if I did that, uh, which is a float, or that, which is even worse. Now it's a double rep, and so double rep um, might take more bits. Well, either either double rep takes more bits, or float rep takes fewer bits. Um, uh, than a pointer. So, so somewhere around here, we have a problem. Let's just go back to int rep, and we can take it for granted here that we don't really want to confuse machine ints and pointers, right? Because they might not be the same width. Um, and so, quite quite sensibly, we get this error: couldn't match a lifted type with an unlifted type. Um, the, well, the other problem here is that GHC doesn't know if I have something like some big function. Do I evaluate the some big function before evaluating f or after evaluating f? And it depends on whether we have a lifted type or an unlifted type here. Um, so that's another complication, but I actually don't want to worry too much about that. Um, but because of that, it talks about lifted and unlifted. As it's written now, probably it would be a better error message to say could match a boxed type with an unboxed type. OK, so. Let's go back to F here. And I said that the, the type of this is really easy to infer. And already we're discovering that the type that GHC infer is not infers is not really the most general type because it can't handle this particular argument. Um, it turns out that because of these concrete representation things and moving bits around in our machine, we, don't, we can't really represent uh, a G, or GHC doesn't support the most general type, uh, which would require some kind of runtime check to see whether it's boxed or unboxed or lifted or unlifted, and then do all this uh, extra stuff, which would slow just about every program down. So we don't want to do that. Um, that said, this is the only call of F in my program. So I would hope that type inference would be clever enough to give a better typed F. So I can give a better typed F. If I say F has type int hash arrow int hash, then my program is accepted. We're green here. And this is all good, right? Because now I've given f the right type, and it can actually work. And now we know when compiling f that f should be a function that expects a machine int in the right width for a machine int in the right kind of register. Um, but if I leave that out, let's just actually delete it entirely. If I leave that out, GHC does do some work to try to figure out if that, would, if that would be a good idea, if int hash arrow int hash is a suitable type. So one way that we can see that is to do some shenanigans. Uh, so here, I'm going to say this. So what I've done is I've introduced an unused let binding, but I've mentioned g. So with the effect of this is that now f and g are mutually recursive which means that GHC considers both of them together at the same moment when doing type inference. And so now instead of figuring out the type for F first and then trying to use that type in G, it does it all at once. And look at this. We get a nice correct type for F, and our program is accepted. So just sort of replay that for everyone. If I have 
let blank equals three here. Now my program is rejected. These things, F and G are not mutually recursive. We're gonna get the wrong type for F and then we can't apply it in G. If I make F and G mutually recursive, now all is well because I can I look at both of them in the same sort of type inference pass. Um, there are other ways of, of doing this, uh, this kind of effect. If instead of uh, having it mutual recursion, I can do this and I can say where down here, G equals G blank equals F of three hash. And now naturally it looks at three while it's inferring the type of F and all as well. Um, so that's another strange thing. So what's really going on here is GHC has to decide when do we default? What we could imagine doing is saying that, that the type of F is some unknown type to that same type. Um, and can we mock that up? I don't think so. I want to say something like unknown to unknown, and then let's have this G be separate, and that's still not going to quite work because uh, GHC has to figure out what is the kind of unc here, and it does that when it sees this type signature. Um, I think. Let's turn on a few extensions just to see. If I turn on partial type signatures um, and named wild cards, whoops, do we get better behavior? No, we don't. Uh, this is a wild card, but it still figures out, it still guesses that the kind of this is going to be the kind of lifted types. Um, so we're not really, I don't really want to talk too much about kinds here, but int and int hash actually have different kinds in GHC. So they, they can't quite, we can't have a type variable uh, for lifted types get instantiated with one for unlifted types. Because if we did that, then when we, when we our program runs, it, uh, functions are gonna have the wrong expectation around where to find their bits and how wide registers should be and all of that gunk. We don't wanna do all of that. Um, okay, I don't think we can actually get this to work. So let me sort of backtrack out of that. Um, but it was just sort of a, a vain attempt um, let's get rid of this. Okay, so now we're back in, into this scenario. Um, so this is really all a question about defaulting. When do we decide what the kind of, uh, what the type of F should be? And if F is, uh, if the type of F mentions a type variable, when do we decide what the kind of that should be? And right now, that is as we're inferring the type of F. And so that means that because we default as we're inferring, if we get this mutual recursion case again, then by the time we default, we've already sort of found the usage site of F and all as well. Um, the question in the ticket linked in the description is really when to do that defaulting because it's not quite so easy in all cases. So let's look at, at another example that I think is even stranger and shows that something is definitely rotten in the state of this part of GHC. Uh, so let's get rid of G here. Um, and instead, uh, let's bring this back to FX equals X say. Um, actually, no, let's not even do that. Let's have something quite a bit simpler, quite a bit simpler up here. Now we're gonna have down here, um, let's see, what do I want? I want G of X, no, no, G of, ooh, I had the example working earlier, uh, but now it's blanking. Um, so what do I wanna have? I wanna have G equals, maybe it's G of Y, ah, yeah, it's just G of Y equals Y, that's good. And then we're going to have h of blank equals g of three hash. So here we're in that same case that we were in earlier. Um, now we're slightly handicapped because HLS isn't showing us the inferred types. But if we look at the error message, then we still get couldn't match lifted type with an unlifted type. And we can we can fix it using the same trick that we did before. Let that equal h. And now we're going to infer the types of g and h at the same time. There's no errors. We have green up here all as well. Um, but things get stranger. Um, so I, for no apparent reason at first, I'm not gonna do this. I'm just gonna say let blank equal X in both of these, which really shouldn't matter at all, but I can say that if I want to. Um, and here now it's not going to work. Okay, let's suppose I just give up and I say, I don't know why this isn't working. And I'm gonna go over here and hmm, write a GADT. So let's see, data G A where muck G is G int. Okay, good. Uh, oh, but now I have an error. It says add gadgets. Okay, so I add gadgets, and my error went away. What on earth is going on here? So I knew that was going to happen. That's that's fake surprise. Um, let's just replay that. 
I comment out the Gadgets extension. Oh, and let me comment out my Gadget. Actually, I don't even need the Gadget at all. So let's just even get rid of it. It's just distracting. Um, so without the Gadgets extension, error. With the Gadgets extension, all is well. What on earth is going on? I have no Gadgets anywhere near here. So what's going on here is that is actually the Gadgets extension implies another extension called mono local binds, but no one ever uses that directly. So I wanted to, to get us in using Gadgets. So let me just turn on mono local binds to be a little bit more explicit about it. What mono local binds means is that if I have a local definition like G or H that mentions a variable that's bound in an outer definition, X, then we don't infer a generalized type for G or H. We, we just sort of do a, sort of a minimal inference step. But what it means in GHC is that we skip this defaulting. And so now, because both G and H are, are affected by monolocal binds because they mention X here, then neither of these will really infer their type. And it means that, that we're going to be looking at all, the entire definition of X before we do any defaulting. The defaulting happens up here when we're inferring the type of F. Um, so we can see this again. Now, instead of saying let blank equals X, if I have let blank equal five, well, now all of a sudden now we're, we're, we're in trouble again. I haven't mentioned an outer variable in the definition of G. So we infer a general type for G and that's the wrong general type. And so we get the error down here. When I have X here with mono local binds enabled, now we're not going to try to infer that general type for G. We do no defaulting until we've read more of our program. And then now we discover what the correct type of G should be. This is very, very strange, right? We shouldn't have enabling or disabling mono local binds sort of affecting type inference in this way. And, and think about the experience of, of, of poor user. Right? Poor user is writing a GDT somewhere else in their file, and it affects the typeability of this F here. No, 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 no. So the debate that we're having on the ticket is where exactly to do defaulting. Do we do it per definition, sort of what GHC is doing now, but only sometimes when we're generalizing types? My thought on that ticket is that we should just have a policy of doing it for once for every top level definition. Um, that's nice and clean and simple and would make all of this more predictable. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out with mutual recursion. Maybe it has to be per mutually recursive group. We haven't quite worked it out all the way yet. But certainly what we're doing now is quite strange. Um, anyway, I hope this has been interesting for you. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.